Hello and welcome to this week's review. And yes, as the thumbnail has it, I am going old school. And for this particular review, I'm looking at a brush, a sort of trad brush to clean your vinyl. Specifically, this one is called the Heart Vinyl SS Record Super Cleaner. And why not? Right now, as I make this video, I have a pounds, UK pounds price only. And I'll try and get other prices and I'll put them down at the bottom of the screen if I can grab them in time. Anyway, so the price I have in UK pounds is one penny short of 50 pounds plus four pounds 99 postage and packing. Now record cleaning brushes are a staple low cost value for money accessory. When I began to get serious about hi-fi when I was oh, 14 years old I think, I recall, I recall owning a few variants of these things. Even David Hart, an ex-lawyer founder of Hart Audio 20 years ago now and creator of the vinyl, the hot, no let's say it properly shall we, the Hart vinyl SS Record Super Cleaner. He also remembers his early days as a user of vinyl brushes. For some time now though, I've seen the vinyl brush has been somewhat of, a, of an anachronism, you might say. Well, to some extent, in this age of vacuum and ultrasonic cleaning machines at any rate. Question then, why has David Haas created this new design? The man himself said, I realized that the cleaning brushes were not up to modern standards as carbon fibers are too big to get in the groove and velvet always bends and pushes debris back into the groove. And wet cleaning is either ineffective or expensive and time consuming. This is why Haas ran with the brush design with super thin brush fibers. Stiff enough are these fibers to enter the groove itself and to remove excess rubbish, but soft enough not to cause excess damage if used vigorously. Another reason Haas created this brush was to lower the general noise floor because of course your turntable's stylus will play anything it sees. A stylus tip, it's not intelligent. So whatever you put underneath a stylus tip, well, that stylus will attempt to play it. And it ain't always melodic. I've said it before, but if you put a cheese and tomato pizza on your turntable platter, the stylus tip will try to play it. And why? Well, you need to add anchovies if you want an audiophile pizza. We all know that, don't we? But nevertheless, the stylus tip would have a go. So if you fill your groove with rubbish, then the stylus tip will play that rubbish. Hence, the pops and the clicks and all of those annoying Rice crispy sounds. So it's up to you to take out the trash, as it were. It's up to you to remove as much rubbish from the groove so the stylus plays the groove, and only the groove, and not decaying pieces of your skin, or cat hairs, or bits of carpet, or soil from the garden, or excess frosting from your recently devoured fairy cake. So what do we have here then? Well, the top part of the brush features a wooden handle plus four Perspex extenders. The overall width of the final design should hopefully be sufficient, but we'll see. In aesthetic terms though, well, I am not impressed. I would have preferred to see the central wooden piece range right across the length of the brush itself as a single piece. I'm not really a fan of the additional Perspex-like pieces. They give the brush a, well, a kind of a rough and ready feel. But that's only the handle, of course. It's the business end that really matters. Those lower fibers that hopefully will do all the work. Reportedly, these brush fibers are 40 times thinner than a human hair, but stiff enough, says Hart, to get deep into the groove itself. The idea is that they, and I quote, bustle against each other, competing for space to remove particles and bring them to the top 
of the groove. Now, as you may have noticed here, there is a dual color to the fiber area. Apparently the white strip is supposed to remind you to clean it with distilled water on a damp cloth when the white strip discolors. Actually though, well, I'm not really sure why all the bristles couldn't be black. Personally, I think black would better show off the dirt. It would better show off if the brush itself is dirty and needs cleaning. I personally think only some of the dirt will show up on the white area. And I failed during use during the tests. I really failed to see any dirt at all on the brown section. So what happens if the brown part is the first part of the brush to become really dirty. I would suggest that the visual indicators are less obvious with these colors. Now to protect the bristles themselves, there is a sort of dead flesh, flexible plastic cover. Now this cover has a secondary purpose. You can use it to kind of fluff the actual fibers themselves to remove excess particles, which is fine. Even so, for the price, I would have liked to have seen a thick, sturdy, strong, hard plastic, preferably see-through, into which the brush could be stored. This particular cover, the one that comes with the brush at the moment, it kind of bends and deforms too easily for my liking, while failing also to protect the end parts of the brush. As for the fluffing thing, well, I'm sure I could find my own method. Thank you very much. So much for the design and the aesthetics. How does this brush perform? Well, my problem is my records are far too clean. So I went outside. Now I searched for dust, but let me tell you this, not any old dust, audiophile dust, dust of the finest quality, dust that provided the crispiest of crackles and the sort of pops that only bursting a balloon could challenge. This was high-end dust of the sort you can only buy in Knightsbridge in London. Once I had accrued my dust, I picked up a piece of victim vinyl from my shelves. Well, sorry for it, really. And I ground the dust into the valiant yet unyielding grooves, which was a bit like a bully pushing a youth's head down a nearby school toilet. Then I braced myself and I played this offending article on my turntable, and throughout this test, I fretted for the next few hours that my poor stylus was wearing away at a rate of knots as it played these particles. Well, hey, I'm here to serve you the noble viewer, apparently. Well, that's what it says in the small print here. What I learned is this, your traditional felt pad, and I used an expensive model from Mobile Fidelity. Well, they're fine and they have their uses, sure, but they are less efficient in terms of scouring grooves for dust. Running a felt pad over the same vinyl real estate, the pad tended to well, it shifted surface grime, but left the lower set of dust, the dust that was deeper in the groove. The pad didn't really get down to that level. I found that the heart brush was much more effective in shifting that particular lower level of matter. I then tried a kind of nylon brush of the type you might get with a record cleaning machine. I got mine with the Lorrycraft record cleaning machine, the vacuum based machine. And that was also superior to the felt brush, but the heart brush, well, that seemed to reach further down into the grooves, further than the nylon brush was able to do. Angling the vinyl disc towards the glare of the sun for a better view, for example, I could see flecks of dust remaining after the nylon brush had passed over a section of vinyl. And it was these flecks that the heart managed to clean. A carbon fiber brush was next. I managed to grab the sample from Project and that was excellent and it did a great job. Saying that, I thought the heart did appear to dig a little deeper in its search for dust. The carbon brush did remove plenty of dust 
but the heart seemed to shift more of it. To be honest, the only real challenger I could find for the heart brush in performance terms alone was the Kabuki brush that I use to apply surfactant to record surfaces when I clean my vinyl, say via a Disco Antistat or a Vacuum RCM or an ultrasonic cleaner. Kabuki brushes feature some of the finest, as in the thinnest, but also densely packed bristles on the market. My Kabuki did as good a job as the heart. It was equally effective. It performed very well indeed. The only issue I had with the Kabuki was its shape, its design. It's compact and it's circular and the heart brush, well, that was longer and it could thus cover more ground during a single pass. That's basically my review of the heart vinyl cleaning brush. So let me give you a few final thoughts, then I'll do a pros and cons thing, and then I'll give you a rating. Now, for some reason, this always happens to me, but what seems simple on the surface in terms of testing becomes more complicated the greater the period of that testing. And that's what happened during my tests with the heart brush. So what I found was that most people see brushes like this and they give their vinyl records a quick swish and then they play. Well, let me tell you, that's not how you will get the best from a good quality vinyl cleaning brush, at least one like the heart brush. Well, you can, obviously, it's entirely up to you. If you are a quick swish man, then you go for it, and I hope your swishes are deeply fulfilling. On the other hand, if you want to get the best from the heart brush, then you will find that repeated brushing will dig out more and more dirt. Having thoroughly grubbified my test disc, so that was, a, that was an extreme example, you might say, and I was focusing on one small sector of the disc. It took me around, what, 40 or so brush strokes to properly clear the area of dust, and I mean fine micro dust. But, as I say, my test disc was notably grubby, for a more real world disc, something lightly dusty, well, maybe 20 brush cleans will be in order. More than one, anyway, and it depends on your own discs, of course. So, should you use one of these for that kind of attention? Well, it's up to you, isn't it? And it's up to your budget. If it was up to me, well, I'd use the heart brush to remove visible dust and a dedicated cleaner if I needed to go further than that, like a Disco Antistat or a RCM, a vacuum machine, or an ultrasonic cleaner, one of those. That said, if you really don't want the hassle of a dedicated cleaner, and you like the idea of this brush, because after all, it's compact and you don't have to plug it into a wall, and there's no spoilable liquids involved, and there's no vinyl drying time, and there's no extra consumable costs, then if you want to, you know you can go a lot further in terms of cleaning with this brush, if the notion grabs you. As for the brush itself, as it stands, well, I think it's too expensive for what you get. I want this brush to look and feel like a 50 pound plus postage item. And I don't feel right now that it does. It feels like a kind of proof of concept item, a tech demo, a prototype even. I want more finesse and design consideration for the price point. Hence, I either want to see the build and the aesthetics improve in terms of quality via a possible Mark II version of this brush, or I want to see the price move downwards. Even so, the basics of this heart brush are right. They are 
correct. It not only works better than just about any other vinyl cleaning brush out there currently on the market, as this video emerges choking from the clawing hands of the algorithm, apart from my trusted kabuki brush, nothing can clean your grooves like this heart brush. And as I say, compared to the kabuki, well, the heart is better suited to the job of cleaning a vinyl disc. Bottom line then, well, if you can't get over the price and the design niggles and the aesthetics, if they present a major problem to you, then wait for a possible update or a price reduction. Although there's no guarantee, of course, that either will actually happen. On the other hand, if you just want to get on and clean your vinyl and you love the notion of a vinyl cleaning brush, take the heart to your heart and get cleaning. Pros and cons. And first up, well, it's the general cleaning performance. The heart brush did a great job. I was very impressed. This brush, as all brushes are in this particular genre, is very easy to use. Portability sounds obvious, but that can be very important. This thing travels in your hand, in your pocket. It's not hard to carry about. Then there is the deep clean option. Yes, you can be Mr. Quick Swish Man. That's okay. But if you want to go further, if you want to actually cleanse your grooves of friable dust, you can do it. In the bad section, I wasn't too happy with the build. It looks a little bit like a tech demo, as I said. Next, the colors of the brush fibers. I thought black might be a better selection than the brown and white. Next, the protective cover. Well, it doesn't protect the ends of the fiber area. And well, it feels a little bit cheap and nasty to me. And because of all of that, I wasn't best pleased with the price. So because there was lots of good things going on and also some bad things going on, that's why I'm going to give this particular brush, the Haas brush, a seven out of 10. And that's a lot folks. Thank you very much for staying to the end of this video. And if I could ask you, just down there, if you could click on the like and subscribe buttons, it keeps this channel progressing at a leisurely pace. Further down, I'll put some contact points for the heart brush itself. And further down still from that point onwards, you will find other links to my website, my Facebook group, and also Patreon, where you can find hi-fi news, etc. Because that's where it lives. It's exclusively available on Patreon, amongst all kinds of other exclusives like buyer's guides and music features, bit of text, bit of video, bit of everything. I will next see you hopefully on Friday for a music alerts video. If you want to know what I've got through the post, physical music product, then I will tell you all on the Friday video. Hope to see you there, of course. Hope to have your company until that time, folks. Bye-bye for now.